So guys, Fuji just dropped a new camera today, the X-T200. Now this is a direct replacement for the X-T100, but it looks like it has a lot of um, advantages or upgrades from that series of camera. One is the processor speed. The X-T100 was pretty sluggish as far as autofocus goes and the X-T200 from the early reports it seems like it's almost as fast as the X-T3 which is which is really good uh, let's take a couple look at some of the, look at some of the specs here it's got a 24 megapixel sensor CMOS now this doesn't have the X-Tran it's got the bare sensor and you'll notice that there's a lot of these specs are very close to the X-T2 and this is what this camera really reminds me of it's got an increased um, grip now the X-T100 had a flat profile and this has a little bit more on the right handed side just to give your finger something to grab hold of which is very very good the dials are typical of the X-T100 series where um, let's go ahead and get a top view of it where you don't have the dials like the X-T1 or the X-T2, the X-T3. It's more of like the Mo dials and, and you know different layout. More of a, a low-end consumer because this camera is priced at $699 and this is the launch price. Um, I don't know yet when it's going to be dropped as far as availability but it is on the B&H site and Adorama site right now. Let's take a look at a, a few more angles of this camera. The viewfinder, um, I don't know if it's the same viewfinder as the X-T2, but it has the same, something like 2.3 uh, megapixels. Uh, so it's very similar in quality, if not the exact same viewfinder as the X-T2. So a bump down in quality of the X-T3, but um, the X-T2, I've never had really any complaints about the viewfinder on it. Um, one of the things that stood out really to me was, let me get to the top of the camera. This, on the right-handed side, there's a, a dedicated video record button. And that's one thing, when I seen this camera, I said to myself, man, it's one of the things I really hate about my X-T2. If we're on family vacations, I'm usually popping between video and photo or photography. And it's just a pain to have to get my all of my settings dialed in because one of the things that I love about the Fuji cameras, at least the X-T2, uh, is that you have all of the, the controls, um, manual controls on top of the camera and you don't have to dig into menus. So I'll have my shutter speed, ISO, and aperture all set for photography, but if I want to shoot video, um, I'll flip the dial to video, but then I have to change if I want to shoot 24 frames per second and then you have to adjust everything else for exposure and then flip back. It's really a pain in the ass. Um, and when I had my Sony, that's one of the things I loved about my Sony is I could set um, auto ISO, set my video settings. So when I hit that video button, it just went into recording button or recording mode with the settings that I, that I set. And then when I'm done shooting video, I unselect that button and then I'm back in photography mode. Uh, it's one of the things that really drives me nuts about Fuji. I love to see that they have it here. I don't know how it's implemented as far as the, the software. And I really hope the X-T4 will have this feature. I prefer not to have it on top. I wish it was in the back of the camera. But I was really excited to see that button. I'm not sure if the X-T100 had that or not. But um, in talking about video, the video specs on this camera is very close to the X-T2 as well. It's got finally 4K, a real 4K. Uh, the X-T100 had 4K 15 frames per second. Like, you know, who's going to use that? But this shoots uh, 30 frames per second. And then full HD, which is 1080, it'll do 60 frames per second. I don't know what the image quality is going to be like. I know the X-T2 and the X-T3 actually have very good um, uh, 1080 quality, which is weird. A lot of cameras, including Sony, they just have shit 1080 video, uh, do great 4K video, but 1080, I don't know why. You think if they can do great 4K, uh, they do great 1080, but that's just not the case. Uh, the camera profile um, the, another thing about this camera that, that's good for this line of camera is the uh, audio, the microphone input. Uh, there's two components to this. There's the microphone input. Historically, this line of camera has had like um, the 2.5, the small non-standard jack. This one has the standard 3.5 millimeter, which is the standard headphone microphone type of jack. 
which is great to see. Also, if you want to monitor your um, audio quality, some people do. I know it's really big for the video people. I typically don't, uh, but there's a, supposedly an adapter, USB-C adapter that you can plug in a, a set of headphones so you can monitor your audio quality. So that's kind of cool. With that UPS, UPS, UPS blah, 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 um, USB-C, you can charge your camera. Now, I don't know if you can charge your camera while it's on. A lot of cameras, you can only charge it through the USB or USB-C while it's off. So um, I hope more people start doing it with the camera on. That means you can basically use a HDMI out if you're doing YouTube or something like that and just have it powered all the time. I don't know if this camera will do that or not. I also heard on one of the videos where uh, I believe it was the Adorama video where it had some gyro something. I don't know if that's a, a digital stabilization. I didn't see that in the specs. Um, um, I know it's not IBIS, but I don't know if they're doing something digitally for stabilization or not. Um, I'm going to still kind of keep an eye on that one myself, but it looks to be a decent camera uh, if you're looking in to get into a Fuji system. For me, if you guys are looking at this, uh, would I get it? No. Uh, and it's, it's for probably reasons that, um, that folks uh, wouldn't kind of think of. Film simulations. One of the things I love about Fuji is the film simulations, and this camera doesn't have Acros. It's got, um, I don't know if it listed here, but it's got a lot of them. It does not have Acros, which to me, that would be kind of a deal breaker. I love shooting in black and white. Um, one of the things I wish my camera, the X-T2 had, that the X-T3 has, based on what I've read, is you can shoot bracketing um, uh, with film simulations. So you can shoot the standard which I shoot a lot in and then um, also like Acros that would be sweet I wish I could just shoot in black and white and then have readily good JPEGs available in color because sometimes things work out black and white sometimes they don't <clears throat> and you want it in color and to most people they're like well, what does that matter because I could just do that in post real quick for me it's important because when I'm on um, vacation my workflow is a little bit different. I post pictures real time, multiple times per day. Um, I upload them to the Google Photos. I create an album, share it with my family, and my family could be thousands of miles away, <clears throat> and they can kind of follow along, and, and everybody pretty, pretty much enjoys it. So it's kind of a cool feature. And I want to be able to choose black and white or standard film simulation because uh, Fuji JPEGs are fantastic. And that's, that would be a really cool feature that I can't do in the X-T2, that you can do in the X-T3. I don't think you can do it here. Um, oh, here's the film simulation. So it has Provia, Velvia, Ostia, Classic Chrome, ProNeg, and uh, several monochrome modes. But some of the videos I've watched, Acros is not included in the black and white or the monochrome uh, mode. So, you know, it's it's one of those things that Fuji usually will cripple some of the lower end cameras because they don't want to give you everything. I hate when companies do that. I get it, but I still think it's wrong. Um, having a film simulation in this camera is not going to, uh, you know, probably make someone buy this versus the X-T3. Maybe it might sway someone from buying this or an X-T3. Two, so for me, and this is kind of goes against Fuji for doing this, but for me, I would buy an X-T2 used over this camera just so I could get the uh, film simulation, the Acros. And, um, and that doesn't benefit Fuji any because they don't make the X-T2 anymore. So to me, I wouldn't buy this camera. I would buy a used X-T2 over this camera for that reason. But people have their own opinion based on their preferences because what one camera works for one individual isn't necessarily going to be the same for everyone so you really have to figure out how you're going to use the camera what's the most important to you there's recommendations on a camera system but it's still in the end of the day it's a personal personal preference uh, let's take a look at some of these these features maybe i missed a couple uh, hdr video um, i'm, I'm kind of interested in what that is going to be like. I, I think that has some potential. I'm not sure in video. One of the things that Fuji does not do, and I hope this camera does it, and then 
uh, the X-T4, because that's the one I'm really having my eye on is the X-T4, is HDR. Now, um, some of the Canon cameras, or most of the Canon cameras, that and maybe even Sony, I forget now the Sony, is you can shoot in HDR, and in the camera, it'll you know do a HDR generation where it takes multiple exposures and creates one JPEG. And again, for me, it's different than everybody else. A lot of people will take four raw pictures or five raw pictures and then do it in post-processing. For me, it's very important because I want that HDR shot, but I want it so I can imp import the JPEG to my tablet and upload it to Google Photos. So my, my need's a little bit different, but I love to see options like have an HDR photo and then, and then even video if it actually works inside the camera. That's great, great to see. Um, Clear Advantage Filter uh, offers um, enhanced brightness to suit working in difficult lighting conditions. I don't know what the hell that means. Clear ad, ad, or Clear Advance Filter. Still, um, the only thing that this filter, when they call filters, maybe not a manual filter or anything that goes on a lens element, but maybe rather it's one of the the filters that like the kiddish filters, like toy simulations. Because um, towards the back it says advanced filter modes. It's got toy. I don't use any of that stuff. Um, it's just, yeah, for me, I don't like to do all that weird stuff. So, uh, again, everybody's different. And then it's got the scenes, uh, portrait, night, f uh, fireworks. These are good for people that don't want to learn how to really set your camera for the certain function that you're doing. But... Um, I, I've never, I haven't used them. I shouldn't say never. I haven't used them in many, many, many years. Uh, I know I'm bouncing around a little bit here, but portrait enhancer settings produces smooth and natural skin tones, and it's probably just softening the JPEGs. Uh, but again, it's making people um, trying to get some better out of the camera photos. I wouldn't use that setting. Depth control is an intuitive method for producing and pre visualizing different depths of some of these things on here it's like they're not really advantages or features are listing as features um, but to me it has to be like high dynamic range or or um, uh, when I say high dynamic not the HDR video but actually so how many stops of recovery can you get does it have in body stabilization does it those to me are camera features this is kind of uh, powder puff type of things that it's marketing for feeks for folks that don't really know much about cameras. Um, just my take on it. So let's um, um, look at these. Uh, it's got wireless, built-in Wi-Fi and wireless. Now the Bluetooth hopefully connects a little better, um, maybe with your iOS or Apple, you know, Apple or Android device. One of the things that sucks with Fuji is their app. Uh, so the app just is shit. It needs to be scrapped and started over. But it would be nice to have a low power Bluetooth where you can always have a connection and hit a button and boom, you can transfer pictures over to your phone. Again, the app sucks, but it would be nice if they started to improve or head towards, head towards the right direction on their mobile integration. Um, I like to see that. I don't know how it's going to be executed. Because Fuji, and whatever reason, their mobile team has been horrible up to date. So we'll see how that goes. So the uh, they have a champagne, silver, and black. Uh, I like the champagne. I like, I've like i always liked the champagne. I probably won't buy it. Um, if it's a Duracoat, I may get it, but I probably will still go black. Um, I like black on my cameras, and pretty much black or white. Uh, or silver is pretty much what I do, um, not silver on the cameras. One of the disadvantages, if you think about it, guys, usually the, the shell is black and there's paint over top of it. And I don't know about this camera, but it's a plastic camera. So, you know, it's going to have typically a black body, plastic body underneath. So if you go with a coating, it's a painted on coating, you can scratch it and then you're going to show black. Well, if it's a black camera and you scratch it, you're not going to notice the scratches. Again, I don't know if those are true um, true characteristics of this camera, but it is a down downside when you get anything other than a black camera. Me, I just tend to like old school black cameras, but I, I do like the silver and champagne colors. I think they look good. I just probably wouldn't buy one. Kind of like the iPhone. I like the look of the red iPhone, but I always buy a black one. Um... 
the battery it's got the typical old school 126 s battery which is expected um, I'm, we're expecting a, a new battery in the xt4 i don't expect it in this camera and um and yeah it's got a, a pop-up flash which i don't know if anybody uses a pop-up flash if you do you shouldn't uh, it's got one of those what i would like to see is cameras if you're going to have some kind of useful room for a pop-up anything I always thought it would be really cool instead of a pop-up flash, especially if a, a bloggy camera like this would be a pop-up microphone. That would just be awesome. If it was a decent quality, like a Rode Micro, um, uh, I think that would be a win right there. People could pop it out and uh, use it and put it away. Um, because this camera may be good for blogging. Because one of the things that we always want in the X-T4 uh, X-T3 then now the X-T4 is a flippy screen and this camera does have it. I don't know at what angles, let me jump over to the the uh, multiple screenshots here. So it does have a flippy screen. One of the things I don't know with the X-T100, the flippy screen, the way it worked is you could actually flip it out and so you could go like a low shot. One of the things I use for photography very very often is just to flip it out from the bottom up so that you can you know lower your camera without crawling on the ground one of the bad things about like the Canon flippy screen and the um, you know you name it um, multiple other manufacturers is that you have to flip it out then rotate it full circle it it doesn't sound like much but it is a uh, it is a few extra stops now if I had a preference between that or the X-T2 no doubt, I'll take that. But I love to see a hybrid um, where you can do it both. You, it, it'll retract from the bottom out for photography, but then if you want to shoot video, and uh, video, the flippy screen is is great for blogging if you're walking around with the camera. But for me, um, I would mostly use it for family vacations. There's many times when I had my Canon M50 where I put it in selfie mode. And I was in more pictures and videos of that vacation than ever before because with a wide-angle lens, I could, with an arm's reach, get me, my wife, and son. Uh, and I would take quite a few of those on the airplane, walking around. Um, again, not like YouTube blogging, which it probably would be good for that, obviously, as well, if you had the right wide angle and if it had decent, decent stabilization. But um, but yeah, that's that's my take on the new X-T200. I think it's a decent camera. Um, would I buy it? Maybe. Um, uh, maybe. It depends on what you're looking for. If you wanted a camera that is easy to use and it's kind of dummy down a bit um, and the price was a concern for you and you wanted it in you know the under $1,000 range, yeah, I just think there's better options. Uh, for me, a used X-T2 is, is a bargain right now on eBay. And you have pretty much this exact camera. It might be a little slower than this camera um, as far as the processing speed because it looks like this one has a bump. But everything that this camera offers is in the X-T2. And the X-T2, you're going to get a higher quality build. It's going to be you know not a full plastic, fantastic type of camera. And and I think it's it's just better for the money. Um, I don't think this is a bad release. The dials for me is going to be you know a major concern. I don't like these you know kid dials. Um, it's just you know it's just not for me. I, I love the the Fuji XT2, the XT3s, the XT100s with the with the ISO and the aperture dials. So for me, I wouldn't buy this camera. I wouldn't recommend this camera. I would, um, um, if somebody wants a point and shoot, there's probably better options. And that's why if you want a point and shoot that's better than an iPhone, which iPhones are really, really good these days, I wouldn't get this camera. This camera is kind of to compete with the X-T2, but X-T2 is better in, in so many ways. Uh, for one is everything I love about Fuji, it's not here. It's the dials, the dials, the dials, the dials. So my money would be on a used X-T2 over this camera because you're going to get the same basic performance and in, in, in video and everything, at least on paper, right? Uh, but you're going to get all the manual dials. You're going to get a better build quality. Um, just an overall better camera for your money. So that's my take on the X-T200. 
And one of the things, again, I want to add to the XT4 wish list is a video button for the reasons I described in this video. Thanks, you guys, for watching uh, another one of my videos. And I uh, hope you uh, subscribe and, and watch more going forward. Uh, take care.